uh, that was you know in the 1960s we had Ted Nelson right came out with the concept of hypertext what is hypertext we all know that even the very prefix to the www that we type out on Google Chrome is HTTPS isn't it right HTTP means hypertext transfer protocol the yes comes there means it is secure the site is secure you can approach it access it uh, uh, no problem for you know uh, accessing it HTTP means not secure the HT there is hypertext what is hypertext from one page you just have to click on the link it takes you to another page see Derrida did this on purpose textual analysis means he says when you analyze the text critically you will find meaning becomes diffused not centered a very challenging proposition I'm just giving you an overview I'm not going into Derrida now so you know he says uh, in a hypertext for example take this right? you are reading something on probably Wikipedia but please don't look up Wikipedia for authentic information it is good Wikipedia is doing a, a very good work happy with them but I have told my students my words even if the whole world to be destroyed and the last all the libraries everything is destroyed along with the world and the last available source of information is Wikipedia even then don't access it right because it is filled with the concept of school he came up with a very good concept of giving knowledge free of course Tagore says now where knowledge is free good but the problem is the dissemination part editing part everything goes off so in Wikipedia for example you click on a link you read a story then there is a hypertext there you click on it it takes you to another page there you find the meaning of something it takes you to another page so where is meaning we all thought that meaning was linear but here meaning is not linear and that is why you know theory gives you textual strategies to analyze any text so when you use theory we normally don't use the word work we use the word a text because text becomes critical and it is held in language the power of language in discourse the power of language this is what uh, Michel Foucault also says language according to him is power language is power that means the language that we use today is heavily political hmm? political but I don't say that words that denote things objects commodities people the language that we use is highly politicized or political language that's why he says language is connected with power and again he also says so the same Foucault says where there is power there is also resistance that is what you find in the absences in Derrida so post-colonial studies also the main as the importance they give in post-colonial studies is also on language front beginning post-colonialism is a wonderful book for anyone doing uh, post-colonial you know studies working on post-colonial criticism beginning post-colonialism by John uh, McLeod it's a wonderful little book like beginning theory something like that where in the very first chapter he says language is the intersection where colonialism and power meet up so language forms the intersection where colonialism and uh, right so see the power of language how we have been constructed through language the East has been constructed objectified by language Franz Fanon right talks about this objectification that happens to him right in uh, France in you know uh, when he was going by the metro you find him sitting in a compartment in the metro train there when uh, in, a, in a compartment filled with the whites around him there suddenly 
a little girl shouts at him, a white girl shouts at him as if he was a devil because he was black. He says, you know, he was, he was, uh, you know, he was not having these opinions, prejudices on him this long. But once this girl started shouting, he became uh, very conscious of himself. He says, for the first time, I began to feel, feel that I was not a subject. I was an object. We know what is an object, isn't it? An object is something that can never speak for itself. For example, I have a watch on me. This object cannot speak for itself. Whatever name I give for it stands. I call it a watch, so it stands. The same way, language dabbles in what is called the political. The various names we give for transgenders is an example. The various names we give for women is an example. The various names we give for anybody who is called or classified as the other is an example. That is why Spivak says, can the subaltern speak? Because they are absences, they are silences. They don't have a voice. Even if they have a voice, they cannot speak out because they are not in the center of power. That's why she says, you can never represent them. Please don't think about representing them. You cannot speak for them. You can only represent their case from your own viewpoint. And obviously, it will be colored by your own ideological prejudices, your engagement with your ideology, etc. So the, 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 the power of language after 1966 is immense. Derrida here comes up with a destabilizing of the center he uses three great thinkers, I said. One is Nisha. You must read his work, Beyond Good and Evil. Look at that. Beyond Good and Evil. So good and evil are constructs according to Nisha. Right? You should read it. The, the next important thinker that uh, Derrida cites in his uh, lecture is Heidegger. Most of us must have known Heidegger. There are special conferences also happening on Heidegger. Heidegger, Martin Heidegger, <coughs> he talks about being in time where he comes out with a startling discovery. It's a very startling, you know, discovery of uh, thoughts, excuse me. You know what he says, Heidegger? Time, the concept of time that we have got down the ages, right from Aristotle downwards till today, has been conditioned, obviously, right, by Aristotle. He wrote a work called Physics. Right? He has written poetics, he has written politics, he has written physics, right? he has dabbled in any many things. So in this work called Physics, Aristotle defines time in a very beautiful way. Even last week, I was asking one of my friends, you know, so how will you define time? I asked him. He said, I don't know. Then I said, you know, some of us were there. I said, think, how will you define time? How, 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 how will you define time? Do you have a definition for time? Like you say, you know, a definition for uh, an object. And he was thinking for long and then... Right, he said, no. Aristotle, see, philosophers in those days, they were revered and respected for the takes. That is the difference between a priest and a philosopher. Right? A priest is a mediator. Right? It could be any priest. Right? They have a book, they interpret and give it to us. But a philosopher is different. I won't say higher or lower. Is they are different because they formulate out of their own thinking new concepts, precepts, philosophies. That is why even today a PhD is called a doctorate, a doctor of philosophy. Because philosophers come out with something new. When you do a PhD, you are doing something new. 
Catherine Belsey in Critical Practice says, no, what is, you know, research, she says, something new that you have found out, that Eureka moment, you have found out that is so innate to you. That is research. So here, Aristotle came up with something new in his physics. He said, time is the now. Look at that. Time is the now. Now. What is now? Now means, now the, what is the time? Right? It is 12. The time is the now. So, present. This concept of time, the present, has been conditioning philosophy, the entire metaphysics, for down through the ages for the past 24 hour centuries. And that is the reason Heidegger says, I distrust Aristotle's philosophy of time because it is concentrating only on the present. Derrida attacked the presence. Presence is the center. So Heidegger says, no more, right? You know, presence is time. For him, time is inclusive, past, present, and future. Eliot says in uh, burnt not in no time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future but, so Heidegger attacks presence that is why uh, Derrida takes it same with Freud Freud also attacks presence he says the unconscious is the seat of everything so again he goes to the absence so Derrida was a great influence on a host of post structuralist feminist movements took a cue from Derrida the absences started to be celebrated. Uh, Post-colonial studies took a cue. New historicism, cultural materialism, a host of theories. Please remember, today, theories gallop. For food, you have a theory. Gastronomic studies is there. For the study of elderly, there's a theory. Geriatric studies is there. For trauma, you have trauma theories. A whole lot of theories are there today. Saturation and more. So we have come to the level of post-theory like post-feminism, where there is a saturation of theory, and theory was an academic enterprise within a closed space. Now is the time to take theory to the masses, to everyone around us, by our precepts. And that is the reason when we do research. Last week I was replying to one of my students. You can call him Roshan. Right? So, when I was replying to him, I told him this, you know, I will help you on a research, you know, giving you an outline. But remember this, your research should help in making the world a better place. Otherwise, there is no use of any theoretical paradigm, like postmodernism, right, celebrates, right, mini or micro narratives, incredulity towards meta narratives. They started celebrating what is called the mini narratives. So there is no more one grand narrative. We have truths. We have a, a multiplicity of truths. We we'll celebrate that. We have a multiplicity of histories. We celebrate that. There is no more one unique history. History is always the report of the what is called the victor. So we have multiple identities. We we'll celebrate that pluralities we celebrate that even english is no more english it's english is we have indian variety of english the australian variety of english right uh, the american variety of english we celebrate that by celebrating theory we not only celebrate absences we not only celebrate pluralities we not only celebrate truths but we celebrate ourselves our existence on this planet because literature transforms, theory liberates. Thank you so much. Probably if there are any questions, I can answer them. Uh, 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 uh,